Happy New Year! If you're new here, uh, I'm Ave, and this is my channel. I am a full-time ceramic artist. I make pottery mostly. I also make illustrations on random things, you know, and I make videos about it. So yeah, every year, or well, <laughs> the last two years, I have done a last year in review slash this year's goals. So last year was 2021 and this year is 2022. And I thought this would be a great way for me to get back onto YouTube. I have so much footage to edit, but uh, it's been really, really busy. And as selling pottery is my full-time business, it was more important for me to make pots than it was for me, at least at this season in life, uh, than it was for me to edit videos, unfortunately. So I'm gonna go month by month, just quick little snaps of what happened that month, maybe how I was feeling, you know, kind of like milestones. And it's really great to do because sometimes you forget like how much you actually got done in a year, even though you may feel like you got nothing done. <laughs> but in actuality, I got a lot done. Yeah, so I'm just gonna look back on 2021 and then I'll talk about this year's goals. So something that I didn't do last year that I'm gonna do this year is uh, some of my numbers for January because in my bullet journal, I actually write down my social media stats. And I think this year what I'm going to do is add uh, how much money my Shopify sales, because that's easily trackable compared to like, um, well, I can include Etsy too, since most of my business is online, but I'll add those numbers as well. And then that way we can compare January stats to December stats. So uh, on YouTube, I had 146 subscribers. <laughs> on Instagram, I had 10,431 followers. On Patreon, I had 31 uh, cool people. I don't know what we call them, subscribers, followers, supporters. They're supporters because they're supporting me and I love them. On Twitter, I had 206, oh, 261 on Twitter. On TikTok, I had 58. <laughs> I wrote that in January. I was super hype about YouTube, getting that going and trying to be consistent. And that's when I opened my Shopify. So before Shopify, I was using Weebly and I still have my Weebly website because it just has a lot of galleries and I still use it as a blog whenever I do want to write something more long form. It, I'm using that now as a portfolio site. Honestly, best decision. February, let's see, I had a shop update and the theme was like candy and sprinkles. I do remember not having as many mugs as I wanted because I had mixed up a new, new to me dipping glaze and it was Amico's Lavender Celadon, which I use a lot, but the dippable glaze was not, it did not look good. It did not look good. So a lot of my mugs were actually not great. <laughs> and I still have one or two of those uh, seconds that I was like, maybe if I refire, I can try again. I should just either give them away, put them up as seconds. Well, I just want them out of here. I'm tired of looking at them, <laughs> to be honest. March was virtual in Sika, and I was actually on a panel for diversity. It was for Bracker's Clay Center. Yeah, it's a clay center, Bracker's Clay Center. And they actually did an article on me and this was kind of like my first time being featured. And to be honest, it was really good. Overall, really cool. And for those who don't know, Inseca is a clay conference, National Council on Education of Ceramics, Ceramic Art or Ceramics in America, something like that, April. <laughs> In April, I was able to do have another shop update. And this time, I was definitely riding the wave of um, Animal Crossing one year anniversary. It has been my number one game on Switch. I don't get to play video games that much because I always feel like, oh, well, if I'm doing this, I should be working. You know, that type of mentality, which is not healthy. But, um,. Looking at my spread, I was like, wow, this is so cute. And I must have just gotten this washi tape. But look at that spread. Isn't it adorable? I love it. 
peaches peaches are my um island fruit and my island is named peach mallow because i like peaches and marshmallow so peach mallow so all of march i must have been working on those pots because in april i had the shop update and the fruits were so cute uh it was my first time or not my first time doing pinch pots but definitely it felt like a really good exercise for me to work on my other hand building skills that I don't use very often. And pinch pots are something that I want to incorporate more into my work. And I'm trying to definitely make sure that like, if I am doing these slower methodical methods of forming pots that I'm honoring that time and making sure I'm pricing them correctly because thrown work is so fast. That's why the wheel was created in the first place. Throwing is so fast and hand building is not. <laughs> uh, hand building is not necessarily slow, but it's definitely not as fast as throwing can be in terms of making a finished pot. So um, it, was, it was really fun and I made some jars and that was really fun. So I definitely want to make sure I incorporate that more regularly rather than just like a one-off. I've been showing some pictures here of hopefully <laughs> of uh, the, that series because I was really proud of that series even though I was like, I'm gonna make something celebrating Animal Crossing. And then it just turned into like, I'm just gonna make a whole bunch of fruit. And it was great. Uh, and the strawberries were a hit. I have brought those back, you know, here and there like little strawberry pinch pots. I probably won't stop doing strawberry stuff because there are still some strawberry things in this brain that I have yet to be able to make. On to May. May, I was diagnosed with a, a uterine fibroid, which is a tumor. Uh, it's 15 centimeters. That's like the size of like a cantaloupe. It's like this big. It sucks. <laughs> um, how I like went on this like discovery of trying to figure things out was um, my word of the year for 2021 was energy. And I was just like, why am I so tired? Oh my gosh. And where am I? Is it because I'm foggy? Is it because of pandemic? Is it because maybe I have like ADHD, which I think I do. Is it my diet? What's going on? I definitely don't feel as productive as I was when I was in my 20s. Now I'm in my 30s. You know, it's probably a lot of those things as well. But in May, when I found out that I have a tumor, I crashed. I'm not even, gonna, <laughs> I am not even gonna front. I shut down, I just slept for weeks. I was very, very sad. And it was hard because it's just like, what is this thing? Um, my gynecologist was very not surprised, very matter of fact, and she's like, well, if you want to have kids or she didn't assume that I want to have kids. She was just like, well, wait, well, the first question is, do you want kids? And then I was just like, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure I want kids. Um, or at least one uh, eventually, just not right now. She's like, well, then that changes things in terms of like what surgery options I will be doing or might want to do. So it's like, well, if you don't want kids, just yeet the whole thing out. Right. But if you want kids, then, um, we have to figure out how to make that usable so if i were to get pregnant right now it wouldn't survive uh it would probably get crushed by the tumor that's sucking my own blood sorry if that was tmi but uh it's been this very big cloud over the second half of my year that i think about every day because i can feel it every day when i lay on my stomach or when i bend over and i'm anemic and i'm really tired so i'm always reminded of it and it's been hard to deal with um at first now i'm just i've accepted it and i'm just now annoyed which i think is a better place to be but don't worry i am looking into uh my options hopefully i'll be able to have surgery to take it out this year i found some really really amazing support groups and that was like the best thing i could have done when on my research was finding some support groups to see like what have other people done what are other people's symptoms there's nothing that you really can do about it. The thing is genetic and it's very common, but they don't tell you about it till you have one and it causes problems. Score for uterine health. Anyways, moving on. I also 
got to go to Philadelphia to visit one of my best friends. And that was really fun. And that really helped to bring me out of my funk, which was really nice. And that's when I bought some, what did I get? I got, so that's when I bought these guys. And yeah, I think it's about time I should change their water. All right, June. What happened in June? I officially decided that I was going to do the Renaissance Fair in the fall. Quick recap, 2019, I did a guest spot. Eric, one of the founders of the Ren Fair, or organizers, really cool guy, was like, hey, you should come do a guest spot at the fair. And I'm like, hey, you're right. That seems really cool. Never been to a Renaissance Fair. Visited, loved it. Did the guest spot, also loved it. And then I was like, yeah, I'll definitely do it next year. Next year is 2020. <laughs> Nothing happened that year. <laughs> and then in 2021, after finding out that like, hey, you have a fibroid, and that's why you're always tired, you know, pandemic stuff. I was like, ah, I don't think I'm gonna do it this year. Who knows how plaguey it'll be outside. But after going to their spring fair, they have a spring and a fall one. After going to the spring fair, I was like, no, I should try it. Cause when else am I gonna get the opportunity? What if I just get more tired? What if the surgery doesn't go well? What if I end up having a kid and I'm too busy and tired? <laughs> All these what ifs were like, ugh, this is my one chance to at least try it at least just once. And then I was just like, definitely signed on like, not that I had to change my paperwork or anything because they just rolled over my paperwork from 2020 to 2021 but that's when I mentally decided yeah actually instead of being like 75% sure that I was gonna back out I was now like a hundred percent gonna do it so then I started doing all of the prep for that and holiday prep and starting to work on my next collection, which was for July. Um, and July was the Woodland Collection, oh, which I think really helped my online presence, but also it was a collection that like, I didn't realize how much I would have loved to do. And the audience or my audience uh, really responded well to it. And I always feel a little bit conflicted with having like these two sides and oftentimes people who like one like the other but it feels odd to like like when you have like fantasy and anime that's basically what's going on here my fantasy work is like D, &D moss mushrooms forest vibes monsters and then i have anime which i love which is like pink and sparkly and cartoons and silly faces and to me those two worlds still feel separate even though I'm the one making both and I can see like they look similar um but stepping more into that fantasy side was really really cool I'm making more as we speak for a gallery show oh one other cool thing that happened in June I was in some podcasts last year I was in three podcasts and between recording and them being released I uh, don't remember which months were where but I will just let you know in case you want to go back I was in convention crossings with D. I was with the mud peddlers uh, with Dante of Earth Nation ceramics and Lindsay M. Dillon both really cool potters very nerdy and I love that of course and the last one was um, roll play grow which is really really cool podcast that interviews uh, creators in the D&D slash fantasy tabletop RPG space. I will link all three of those episodes down below in case you want to hear some interviews. Back to July was Woodland Collection. August. August I traveled a bunch. Um, I actually had my first proper vacation with my partner, husband, Zach, and we went to Cooperstown. Honestly, it was probably more for him than for me. <laughs> because Cooperstown is where the Baseball Hall of Fame is and he loves baseball. But I will say as someone who has zero interest in baseball, it was actually really fun and really cool because we stayed at a, a proper little cute bed and breakfast and the bed and breakfast was amazing. And we had really good food both there and in surrounding towns. And it's like upstate New York-ish. 
So if you like New Englandy type stuff, which I do, that's why I'm still here in this area of the country. It's amazing, it's really cool. The Art Museum in Cooperstown had a feature, in a huge feature on uh, Keith Haring. And Keith Haring is one of my favorite artists ever for lots of different reasons. And I've always felt kind of connected to the work that he did using art as a way to make messages and trying to make art as accessible as possible which is probably why I'm always conflicted when I want to raise my prices. It was a good weekend trip. And then after Cooperstown, towards the end of August, I went to Virginia. Rural Virginia is where my family is from, at least on my mom's side. It was really cool to see my family that I haven't seen in years. I used to go down south every summer with my aunts and second cousins and great aunt and just go play in the woods and sweat. <laughs> <laughs> there's no there's not much to do and i think that was the first time that like i have done any type of vacation like with all of my siblings and my parents and as adults so that was fun and interesting again i'm one of five so there's a lot of us <laughs> And beyond that, I also went to the New York Renaissance Fair, which, oh my gosh, it's huge. And one day is not enough to see everything. And it was really, really cool. I got to meet the potter behind Elon Pottery and I got one of her mugs. And then like any time that I wasn't traveling, it was just spent making as many things as I could for the Renaissance Fair that I'm bending. So for September, Renaissance Fair, first of all, overall, amazing. Second of all, the most work I've ever done, ever, in my life. <laughs> um, or at least in recent memory, it felt like a lot of work. And I'm very, very thankful to my friends, my siblings, and my parents who came and helped table, uh, got me water, and cooked. My dad even helped me glaze and I think he really likes it, which is great. Um, it was really fun. It was so much fun, oh my gosh. And then when I told them that they, they have to dress up in order to help, my mom would just end up buying like three outfits and bought herself a crown and, oh, it was so cool. It was just so cool. And I'm, I'm just, I'm so stinking excited to do it next year. I cannot wait. <laughs> but also I'm, ex I'm when it was over, I was glad it was over, but also it was sad. I could ramble about Ren Fair for a very long time, uh, but I will say that by October, definitely felt like I got used to the routine. I will say overall, keeping up with inventory was really, really hard, and I definitely need to make way more stock. Um, I know better for, for this year. Uh, that I need to make more things and probably raise my prices. Any whoosies. Beyond Renaissance Fair, uh, in October, I made a Halloween collection like I do every year. And I felt bad that I was behind. And I had originally made Halloween pots in August. And I had saved them on the shelf for so long. They almost made it. And then I just kept pulling from them. And the pile just kept dwindling when I was low on stock for the Renaissance Fair every week. And I was just like, ugh, I guess I'll take a few more. Ugh, I guess I'll take a few more. And then by the last weekend, I was just like, ugh, I took the last of them. Hopefully no one buys them. <laughs> Why was I thinking that? Um, but they all, they all sold. Next year, I will just have my online update of Halloween pots in August, knowing that October, I will just have like Ren Fair leftovers and that's it because trying to do an entire collection in the matter of like two weeks, I did it, but that wasn't healthy. As soon as I was done with the Halloween update, I kind of just was like, okay, I need to refocus and get back on track with all the other responsibilities I had. I had agreed to making pinch pots. And so I had to make like 75 pinch pots. She ordered 60, but I always make more. So I did that. I had to catch up on my Patreon rewards because that went to the wayside once Ren Faire took over my life. I had to clean my house. <laughs> my house was like in such a disarray and unpacking and finding new homes for all this Ren Faire stuff that I bought in terms of like my garb 
and my setup and all the accoutrement that goes with it. I had to, you know, do a lot of organizing. That's kind of like what November was. And I definitely did not think Ren Faire was going to be as busy. My initial plan was to be like, all right, I've made enough stock to last me through September. And then like in September, I will make things for October. In October, I will make things for November slash Halloween update. That is not exactly what happened at all. What happened was I made enough stock for the first like two weekends tops. The back stock that I made, nowhere near enough. So then I was just treading water every week. So by the time that Ren Faire ended, I was just like, I have nothing. <laughs> I have nothing to sell. <laughs> or at least that's how I felt. I felt like I had nothing. I had things, just not the things that people want. So that was November. And then December, I finally had a small online update. And what I ended up doing instead of just like one giant update, I just had like little incremental updates of whatever I either found or had made because I was still, you know, I had like remnants of trying to fill the kiln for all the other projects that I had to do. Anyways, that was a lot of rambling for what happened in 2021. <laughs> but you know, for a general overview, that's all that happened. And now for my December stats, here's my January stats for comparison. And I will now list also my stats as of right now, because I just checked on my phone. YouTube, I have 495 of you lovely individuals who have chosen to subscribe. And on Instagram, I have 13.3 thousand. I'm not gonna go look at the specifics. Um, on Patreon, I have 65. 65 supporters, and that's amazing to me. <laughs> on Twitter, I have 352. And lastly, for TikTok, I have 6,136, which is a huge improvement from 58. <laughs> uh, yeah, so those are, those are my numbers there. Wow, what a year. I will say, I am very thankful that I do not feel burnt out. That's really important to me. You can probably tell that I have a cold because I caught COVID like at least 30% of my state probably more, um, did with this new variant. Very thankful that anyone else that I know in my family and in my circle all uh, either tested negative or if they did catch it, it is very mild and they are recovering nicely. Now for this year's goals. In my six month reset, where is it? Uh, so in my six month reset, one of my criticisms for my goals was I need something a little bit more measurable. When I stop journaling, I have brain fog and I need a better morning routine. <laughs> so for this year's goals, I do have a word of the year. I made a little mind map, as you can see. Uh, and my word or slash feeling of the year is that I wanna feel centered. And I feel like that resonates with a lot of people, especially with the, um, pandemic brain fog. I've been reading up on it and it's not from actually, or well, I mean, obviously it can also be from having COVID, but the amount of uncertainty and living through a pandemic, even if you don't catch COVID, can make you feel really foggy. And that's like the best way to describe it, where you're just kind of going through motions uh, you can't think straight, you can't think clearly, and it's really tough for everyone out here, uh, especially in America. But yeah, so my word of the year slash feeling of the year is centered, and revolving around that, I think things that'll help me feel more centered is getting my self-care into more of my own routine slash finding a morning routine that works. And for me, that looks like starting therapy again, finding a yoga um, practice that I really like. If you have any recommendations, especially for like um, body neutral, body positive, fat yoga, because <laughs> I have a belly and I have a tumor with, that I feel every time I bend. Um, if you have any recommendations, 
that'd be great if you could let me know in the comments. But that's some ways that I feel like I can add self-care into my routine very um, solidly. And another thing that'll help is with my finances. Um, I look into hiring a bookkeeper, uh, opening up a separate account for my casual fun spending money will definitely help because if I see that that number is low, then it's just like, well, I guess I can't spend anything. So that's all centering around my word of the year. And if you want this mind map, this was actually a download for my patrons and I actually opened it up to all tiers for this specific download. Um, so you can hop on to uh, Patreon and snag that if you, if you want one. Another goal of mine, since I need more measurable goals, is I set some follower number goals. If I don't reach these numbers, no big deal, uh, to be honest. I have broken up <laughs> with the idea that followers equal sales, because I know that it doesn't. Um, it doesn't help sometimes depending on how you use your social media but sometimes your followers aren't always your buyers sometimes they're just admirers um a lot of things that happens with artists is that other artists follow you and they they may not actually be collectors or shoppers of your work um so you have to make sure like you're using your social media to target people who want to buy your work not just other people in the community like for my example other ceramic artists certainly there are ceramic artists who also collect work like myself i definitely also collect work but yeah that's a trap that a lot of artists fall into that's why i'm a firm believer that followers don't always equal income and the idea that a high follower count means more validity in my work no it doesn't um i'm also saying this in a place of privilege because I have 13,000 on Instagram, but I also was able to be full-time when I had 3,000 on Instagram. Anyways, here's those numbers. They're very, very general. <laughs> on Instagram, I want to reach 15,000. I think that's really achievable. On TikTok, I want to reach 10,000. And on YouTube, I want to reach 1,000. And on Twitter, I want to reach 500. Now, what will actually get me to these goals is posting consistently. So the overarching goal here for those is to post consistently on these four platforms. That's the goal. <laughs> and I do believe that that goal will get me to, or really close to, those numbers. Next goal is to not restructure my Patreon, but uh, kind of like rekindle my fire with it and figure out how I can do better so I can better serve my supporters on there. Um, with the teapot tier, I am and was terrible <laughs> at getting the mugs out on time because customs, even though they were amazing and I love doing them, they got like whacked to the side thanks to Renfair and that's not fair to them at all. Uh, and it's, it's tough to juggle everything when you're the only one and especially with ceramics and you have to wait for like a firing and with the, with custom orders, I don't want to put them in a firing that I'm like, I'm going to start this firing at 12 PM midnight, have it kindle for four hours, wake up at 4 AM to start it. And then I'm going to, you know, speed it up and cool it down a little fast um because i was doing a lot more intricate things and when you do more intricate things you want a how can i say a calmer firing schedule and for the ren fair i was doing very basic solid glazes that can take a beating if that makes sense not good not fair to them and stresses me out and that's not what we're doing here that's not what we want I love making them though because they have some really cool ideas and it allows me to try new things and oftentimes it's things i really like so um i just have to figure out maybe if i ask for their custom mug information like way in advance which sounds ridiculous but if that's what i gotta do then to get them the mug on their year anniversary 
then that's what I gotta do. What else with Patreon was I like, it's been buzzing around in my head. Uh, the noodle bowl tier, I really like. Four times a year I make a little sculpture thing. And then once a year they get like the mug of the year that is like exclusive to that tier. And I really like that. I want to open it up for more people. I just have to make sure that I have the capacity to make those tiny little sculptures and make sure I don't make them too, too intense because there are a few of them that I like went maybe a little bit too overboard in terms of the amount of detail. Uh, <laughs> and it took a lot longer than I thought, but I still like them. And it's really fun way for me to like, again, try something new, something a little different four times a year and they get something really cool. Overall, I want to like figure that stuff out and maybe take away slash add other things in the other tiers to balance it out to make it feel like it's worth joining because I haven't been doing the videos, but also very few people watch them out of the 60 some odd people who are in there, like maybe six or seven people watch the videos. I was just like, well, I don't want to make a video for six or seven people. So I gotta figure something else out. Maybe they don't want a video. And if they don't want a video, then that's fine. Um, but what I know they do like is early access. So obviously I'm gonna keep doing that. But yeah, just figuring out what works, what doesn't. Make sure that I'm like cutting out the things that it, if they don't want it and I can spend my time doing more of the things that they do want, then that's obviously the end goal here. And I also want to add more things to the secret shop. And I got to figure out what type of things. Uh, the first thing is definitely pre-orders. I'm thinking of them having first access to the pre-orders. That'll help me figure out like how to work it in Shopify. But also it'll help me figure out what is my capacity for pre-orders. Because I definitely want to bring it back this year. And I think that's what's going to help me reach my financial goals. Because my financial goal is to increase my Shopify sales by 50%. So in order to do that, I think pre-orders is definitely part of the answer. If I have pre-orders more available in the secret shop, that's a bonus. And we're gonna figure it out together. I think that's everything. Okay, this is already a really long video. I do love making it. Hopefully you enjoyed hearing me ramble about how 2021 went and what I hope for for 2022. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, hopefully 2022 is gentle to our sneaking in. Really hoping for a chill year. We've had two very jam packed years as a society and we could use a little bit of rest. Once again, thanks for being here. You're amazing, you're awesome. And I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.